You know, going back around to the issue of food, the, the $29 a week, yeah. you mentioned that that was an order that came down from RTC, the Religious Technology Center. Yeah. Now, this is important. Did other orders come down from RTC? Well, pretty much everything came down from RTC. <laughs> well, the reason I asked is there was a, a, a lawsuit here in America Monique Rathbun sued David Miscavige, Church of Scientology uh, International, RTC. <clears throat> and David Miscavige claimed that he had no direct role in the day-to-day -day management of the Church of Scientology International. True or false? That's absolutely false. So David Miscavige does get very involved in the daily management of Flagland Base and the other churches? Well, I mean, I wouldn't say that he he necessarily orders every single thing, but he just puts there the amount of money that needs to be made, and then it needs to be made. But so he's effectively managing it yeah. through financial controls, but also the RTC rep network. Yeah, the, uh, those are the ones that actually uh, interfere directly. Like their their job would be to inspect, but it, in uh, reality, they are the one that go there and uh, give direct orders when, even in situations when they shouldn't. So an RTC, a member of the RTC rep network has authority over an executive at FLAG. Yeah. They can just... Yeah, I mean, they are higher, but still based on the original operating uh, pattern, they are not supposed to be managing uh, organizations day to day. But it's just good to get on the record that what David Miscavige said in a court of law in an affidavit is not correct. That's right. And I think, and I think that's part of the uh, fraud that the Church of Scientology represented to the IRS to get its tax exemption that there was checks and balances and that RTC was only responsible for the ecclesiastical purity of the Scientology religion. Yeah, that's definitely not true. Maybe it used to be that way, but it's not anymore. Well, in my opinion, it was never that way. In fact, there's a video... Be, I mean, before David yeah, Miscavige. Health issues at flag. What would happen if you had the flu and 102 fever? Are you put into sick bay? Yes. No, what? It's called isolation. Isolation? Yeah. What do you do in isolation? Well, we would get vitamins uh, and some uh, herbs like echinacea. Would you ever get antibiotics if you needed no, them? No, I, I never got antibiotics in, uh, in, uh, during the time when I was in the sea or... If you had a, a headache, would you get aspirin or Tylenol? No. So no... I mean, at what point... If you have a high fever of 102 and you have an infection, a, say a sinus infection, an ear infection, would they take you to the doctor? In that case, yes. But I did have a situation when I had, uh, my kidney stone was actually painful and I was taken to the doctor, like I was taken to the hospital and they didn't give me painkiller because they had the idea that uh, Scientologists don't take any painkillers, which is normally true, but when it's to the degree when I was literally dying because of the pain, then uh, like they didn't even ask me if I want to get the painkiller or not, they just didn't give me any. So you had to just suffer through it? Yeah. That, that kidney stone is extraordinarily painful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I was in a hospital, yeah. but I, it was just surprising for me that they just assumed that this is the case, and yeah. they didn't even ask. So your, your kidney stone was one of the, was it one of the worst experiences during your CR career? Yeah. Yeah. What are some of the other bad experiences you had? Well, the worst experience I had was during the release of uh, the updated materials of Scientology in 2007, when for about a six month time period, we were staying up until five o'clock in the morning every single day. And, uh, the next day we would have to go on post at uh, 9.15. So this was the release of the basics? Yes. So were you working on selling basics libraries? Yes. 
And what were the costs of the libraries? The, the book package uh, cost about $500. Then uh, there were different packages. The, the, uh, the biggest one costing somewhere around uh, $10,000. But uh, I, I read costs somewhere between three to five thousand. Yeah, I mean there there are different yeah. degrees of packages. Like there's there's the five hundred one. There's like the one that is about three thousand. But if somebody bought everything, like everything that existed, it was called the ultimate package. Mm -hmm. That was uh, ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand yeah. dollars. And these are all simply reprints of, of books that have been around. No, it, it was more than just reprints because uh, they actually what what they did is they took all the handwritten works and all the uh, the tr the transcriptions like the 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 tapes where he dictated the books and they actually spend uh, hundreds of thousands of man hours of Sea Org to go through and. Uh, and make changes based on that. At least this is what we were told. Like uh, it, it, it definitely wasn't just reprints. Like it was, okay. uh, and well, and also there there were a bunch of materials that were never actually released before, and uh, they would take those uh, 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 tapes, like these old real tapes, and they would actually run it through a whole procedure to to restore it. Like so. they actually built a facility for that, and that's also like uh, thousands of hours of of, of sea org. And then one more thing that I I must say is that there's a specific series uh, about Aaron Hubbard, and they even went to the uh, to the extent where uh, the color of the printing was a specific gray that they invented and they called it Aaron Hubbard Gray and it was a specific uh, hmm. combination of uh, between black and white. Yeah. <laughs> now on these packages you had a quota to sell. Yes. What was your personal quota? Well ev everybody was supposed to at least sell one every day. One library every day. Yeah. And you, like one package, and you didn't get to sleep until you'd sold your one package. Well, it, it wasn't really like that. Yeah. It, what was happening is that they will look at the overall uh, money that came in that day, and that had to be over a certain limit. And when it was over that certain limit, then uh, the bus drivers that were sleeping in the bus were called, and they could they would come and pick us up and take us home. So if the group made its Yes. Order, you could go home. Yeah. But that was pretty brutal work for six months. Yes. Selling seven days a week. Yeah. Now, well, actually, uh, uh, Thursday night we were exempt because then we had our staff meeting. We, we could actually go home Thursday night and get a, a proper sleep. Well, that's very generous of those sleep yeah. drivers. <laughs> <laughs> One night of sleep. The, uh, it's an interesting thing about the basics. One number I've heard is that it brought in over a hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, what did you make in one week at FLAC? Well, first my pay was fifty dollars, and then it got increased to a hundred dollars in the last uh, couple of years. One hundred dollars. Then we got like occasional bonuses, like Christmas. Yeah. How? No. When less? When you get a hundred dollars, is that? Do they take any money out of it? Yeah, taxes come out. So, what would be your net? I mean, for fifty dollars, it was forty-three. So, whatever is the double of that. Yeah. What expenses did you have? I mean, that's not a lot of money to get by on. No. I mean, you know, it's it's not really just the expenses. Like people are also trying to live, like buy things like a a laptop or fly home to Europe. Like they, it would take uh, months and months and months uh, to save up enough money for a flight ticket, but that means that the person can buy nothing else in the meantime. So you had to scrimp and save to go to, yeah. to buy a plane ticket. Now this is strikes me as odd because normally you would think in in return for your devotion to the Sea Org and your sacrifice and the long hours, they would buy you at least one ticket home a year, a round yeah. trip ticket, but they won't. No. And actually, there's one more thing that, uh, like per uh, the founders uh, policies, the CEO members are supposed to be getting uh, regular bonuses. 
and I know that a top terminal in RTC and the local RTC actually cancelled it and said like you know this was told to me that uh, somebody who heard it that he actually said that the staff members are ripping off the church by, by getting uh, bonuses 